This is what I call the member-based operations. This is the next slide after. Basically, think of this mantra. Um, and I think it should always matter what you think. Even if you don't work towards a specific function, you have to be able to have a say in it. Why? Because at, at the end of it all, what Isaac does, what the organization does as a whole, should be representative of what you envision as a member. Being an IFIC member who drives toward that vision in your own part. Um, what I plan here is that everything we do, schedules, event schedules, even operations such as promotions and servicing even, have to be consulted not just by the people who are responsible for them, not just by say, for servicing the account managers or for promotions, the pr promotion team. We have, we have to have a system of feedback within the entire local community. If we establish this, I believe that not only will we, not only will we be able to come up with bigger ideas, better ideas than you, but we will also be able to develop ideas better since we are doing it across the variety of people from different standards. Uh, so, given that idea, how do you see this copy like a being organized in the local group? What kind of system are you going to have? When I stopped my slide, I was at TLP strategy. One of my methods here is to use the TLP as, or no, is to use the TLPs or a TLP network in general to come up with a collaborative account management system. What I mean by this is that when we set up that account management system, it is not only the discretion of talent management and its talent managers to come up with the system. It has to be consulted by the people who will have, by the people who will enforce it, that's the end, and also by the people who we do it for, which is the rest of the PLPs across the local grid. I'm from the audience. As a psych major, please give us a profile of a person who joins ISEC. What are your typical strengths and weaknesses, and how fit are you? to hone these strengths and help improve these weaknesses. Please answer in less than one minute. Um, from, what, from what I gathered, um, most people who join ISEC already have this notion, or the majority rather, have this notion that they want to be able to change the world. And they do this via the international aspect of ISEC. That is where more commonly known for exchange. Um, in terms of building and idealizing or building these people towards a vision, um, I believe one thing that we do teach people and one thing that seems to be a trend, or no, an observation for me when it comes to new members is that they have to be able to teach you how to organize them what they do. They don't just aim for something, they also have a plan to it. This can be as simple as encouraging the use of grant charts. We teach time management skills to everyone. But I believe these are, what is, these are things that are essential to be able to develop high school. Um, how do you tackle this and why is it going to be better? Question. Um, how do you tackle the developing team video program and what does it specifically to the members? So, a lot of people ask this to the other team cabinet. So, if we were uh, potential members right now, how do you tackle the team video program for us? It's different from the other groups. Um, I went thinking of the DLP. I prefer to use top up several distinct groups, and I'll just go over that right now. One is that our DLPs have this international edge. As I said earlier, with my plans for knowledge management. I want, the, I want our members to have that international edge when it comes to gathering knowledge. What our DLPs do, what they know, and what they impart to our members have to be sourced from it, have to be collated from what they have experienced locally and what they know from other icebergs abroad. Next would be on this concept of PLPs enforcing PLPs or PLP for a uh, synergy within PLPs. Um, one of my plans is to have is to hold the PLP meeting that we pilot in this term on a more regular basis. This is so that we can use it as an avenue for lead session series, teaching leaders on team management, as well as feedback sessions with the way that it operates, and team management case practices. I believe that team, team leaders talking to each other and helping each other on how they could manage the team better or how they could make operations more efficient would be very beneficial for our team leaders because it empowers them. And in turn, a program like this, I believe, would be able to create better demand from PMPs and going forward further PMPs because they see the value, they see this prestige that is associated with PMPs. 
Um, what is your stand on the MMRP? Is, are the criteria set enough? And do you wish to be more strict in implementing it? And will you finally purge out some members that are underperforming? Um, I believe that the MMRP is a short-term solution. What we hope to, to invite with the MMRP is that for now it's extensive motivation for members to as a requirement to retain your membership to attend a certain number of events. But through these events, I hope that we, I believe that the MR, MMRP should be able to develop intrinsic motivation such that in the future we can pull away the MMRP and that the most of our members attend events not because it is a requirement but because they are motivated to and because they believe in the values of your role. So for next year, you're not going to strictly implement the MMRP? Um, that would have to be assessed by the later and right now to see if our current member base would still require extrinsic motivation which in turn will develop that value, that internal value that we want members to have. Um, <coughs> from here, I'd like you to assess how here has gone to get the performance of the GDP for the current year. Having that assessment, where do you want to take that support from the GDP for the next year? Especially coming to the members of the Okay, um, I believe that as of right now, as in given the context of the current year, we have not been able to successfully support, or we have not supported as much GCDP, GIP, ISX, and OGX. This is evident in our current need to rack up a lot of large number of signups for our GCDP, OGX campaign. Um, I believe that should proper support have been implemented and carried out in the first place, we would not have any need for such. Given that for next term, um, part of my plans to be able to foster more support for the GCP and GIP programs is to consult how, uh, again, um, it's, based, it's member based operations, so I mentioned earlier. Not only, I view, uh, for example, servicing payments. I view it not just a responsibility of GCP and GIP, but also a responsibility of the TMT and PLT. You should be asked to service our payments. Is it not the TMT and PLT? With that in mind, I want them also to have a say in how we service them. This can be as simple as asking members outside of the exchange pockets what they want our trainees to do or what they expect from our trainees. That way, we do not just have the trainee side, the GCPG side of expectations, but we also have the other side of expectations, which is the people who would service them. Follow up? Yes. What is your take on the Mary Bell Yes. Comment on the past performance of members who are going to change. And where does that kind of impact? Um, performance with regards to being in the local condition. Yeah. Members, our members here, going on experience. Okay. Um, I believe that we um, I believe that we have to some extent been able to successfully encourage members to go on exchange. This is evident by the number of people we have. But we still can do more in terms of delivering this message of GCP and GIP to members. Right now, we need to, um, we need to get the message across that going on a TNP and PLT is not, the, is not really the only way to maximize the ICX. And we need to position GCP, GIP, or exchange in general to our members in the local community as something that is value added or something that would give them a very, very big edge in their future careers. Um, with regards to members coming back from exchange and performing in ISEC, I believe that most of our members who go on an exchange, from my point of view, have been able to contribute to the LC in several different capacities. However, one thing that I feel is lacking is their promotion of exchange. We rely on a select number of people to promote a having on exchanges, TMPs and DLPs to the rest of the local community. And I believe that we can still tap the remaining people who go on an exchange and let the local community hear this audience. Although on the question about the market amplifying, so one person on the planet, they don't know the difference in the local planet, they know about the version that they support. But how does this affect the efficiency of that? This one is. Sorry, man, I'm telling you. You still have to wait for the opinion of those, of everyone, just to ensure that. Yeah, but basically it's a motivation. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, the person who is responsible for their um, respective operator is still the deciding factor, is still the decision maker in carrying out these operations. What I meant with my member based operations or frequent consultation is that you don't have to limit yourself to dealing with these operations alone or on the basis of the I want to promote this culture, this mindset that what you do 
you can ask other members. They also have a say in it because in turn, it drives towards their vision of Isaac, which is what we all stand for. Thank you.